Skills for Lifestyle Support Part 2 Nursing Care at Meal Times First chapter is Significance and Aim of Meals Section 1 Significance and Aim of Meals 1 Significance and Aim of Meals There are three points 1 To nourish our body to maintain our lives 2 To stimulate the cerebrum and help establish the rhythm of life. 3. Eating is one of the joys of life and it is an opportunity for communication to build human relations. Second chapter is Mechanism of Mind and Body Related to Meals. There are two sections 1. Mechanism of Mind and Body Related to Meals. 2. Flow of eating and swallowing. 1. Mechanism of mind and body related to meals. Many bodily functions are related to meals. 1. Your brain senses that you are hungry. 2. To examine the food with your eyes. 3. Using a pair of chopsticks and a spoon to put the food in your mouth. 4. To chew and swallow the food. When you have a meal, you confirm the food with your sense of vision and smell and perceive the taste and chewy texture with the sense of taste and touch. Let's review the basic structure of human body related to eating. Respiratory system and digestive system. First, respiratory system. The inhaled air passes through the respiratory tract. The oxygen is received in the lungs and the carbon dioxide is discharged through the tract. The respiratory tract is the path the air takes from the nose to the lungs. Pharynx. Both air and food pass through pharynx. Larynx. Only air passes through larynx. A cough and phlegm are reflect action to clear irritants such as dust. Digestive system. The human digestive system consists of gastrointestinal tract from the oral cavity to the anus and the organs that secrete digestive enzymes. The system digests and absorbs food, takes in necessary nutrients, and excretes the waste product of digestion as feces. Esophagus is tube connecting throat with the stomach. Stomach secretes acid and enzymes that digest food. Small intestine digests and absorbs food. Large intestine absorbs nutrition and water. Remaining waste material is stored as feces. Rectum stimulates the desire to defecate when the rectum is full. 2. Flow of eating and swallowing. 1. Food is recognized and the saliva is secreted. 2. Food is chewed and mixed with saliva to form a bowl of food, bolus. 3. The bolus is transmitted from the oral cavity to larynx. The tongue is used for transmission. 4. The swallowing reflect occurs and the bolus passes through the pharynx. 5. The bolus moves into the stomach through the esophagus. Is there a disorder somewhere in this floor? Food intake becomes difficult. This is commonly known as eating and swallowing disorder. Aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia is caused by bacteria mistakenly entering the trachea or bronchial tube with food and saliva. Entry of saliva and food, including bacteria, into the trachea. Invasion of bacteria into the lung. The lung causes pneumonia. 
Third chapter is Basics of Mealtime Assistance. There are three sections. 1. Points to remember regarding mealtime assistance. 2. Posture at mealtimes. 3. Mealtime tools. 1. Point to remember regarding mealtime assistance. There are four points. 1. Confirm the user's food likes and dislikes. 2. Be careful that if there are the certain food that the user must not eat due to disease and food allergy. 3. Cook food soft enough or cut it small enough to make it easy to eat and to soothe the chewing and swallowing ability of the user. 4. Take care to serve warm food warm and cold food cold. 2. Posture at mealtimes. Correct posture at mealtimes. 1. Sit back in a chair with the swallows on the floor. 2. Lean slightly forward and draw in the chin. 3. Mealtime tools. Easy to hold fork and spoon. Chopstick with spring. Easy to hold tableware. Bendable fork and spoon. Strap on spoon holder. Cup with handle. Easy to scoop food dish. Non slip plate mat. Fourth chapter is Actuality of Mealtime Assistance. There are two sections. 1. Preparation for a meal. 2. Actuality of Mealtime Assistance. 1. Preparation for a meal. Put on an apron for the dining room. Help a user to put on the rubber apron. Put the starch into water or tea. Check the nameplate to identify with the user. Bring a food tray to a user. 2. Actuality of mealtime assistance. Hand wash. Greeting, explaining, and obtaining consent. Greeting and explain to the user the purpose and content of your actions and obtain consent from the user. Check the posture of the user. This is good posture. Correct posture at mealtimes. 1. Sit back in a chair with the swords on the floor. 2. Lean slightly forward and draw in the chin. This is butt posture. Lean too far forward. This is also butt posture. Don't let the user chin up. It might cause misswallowing. Explain today's menu. Have the user first drink liquid. Moisten the inside of the mouth. Ask which one the user want to eat first. The caregiver always respects user decision. In the case of assistance with eating for the user with hemiplegia, 1. Sit by the side of the user dominant side or diagonally in front of the unaffected side. 2. Place the food into the corner of user's mouth from the unaffected side. Assistance with eating. This is good posture. It is important to sit by side to establish eye contact on the same level. This is butt posture. If you are standing while assisting the user with meals, the chin of the user is lifted up, which will increase the risk of aspiration. This is because if you pull the spoon upward, 
The user's neck also goes upward. Confirm that no food is remaining in the mouth. Ask the user to confirm that she is done with the meal. Then confirm that no food is remaining in the mouth. Oral hygiene care. After eating, oral hygiene care like gargling throat, brushing teeth, cleaning the dentures. Have the user maintain a sitting position for about 30 minutes after meals to prevent aspiration pneumonia. Record the amount of food on the list. Fifth chapter is Form and Composition of Meals. There are three sections. 1. Form of Meals 2. Meal Composition 3. Meal Arrangement 1. Form of Meals Regular Meals 朝食 Rice Porridge and Soft Meal Okayu, Nansai Shoku. Chopped meal, Hidami Shoku. Mixtured meal, Mixta Shoku. Liquid meal, Ryudo Shoku. Two, meal composition. Staple food, Shushoku, rice, noodle, and bread, etc. Main dish, shusai. Side dish, fukusai. Soup, shirumono. Three, meal arrangement. Meal arrangement. This is a typical Japanese meal arrangement. Rice is left, and soup is right. Main dish is in the middle. Clock position. When the visually handicapped person is having a meal, and you need to tell him or her where a specific dish is located, you can explain its direction by mentioning the direction to which the hour hand of a clock is pointing at a certain time of the day. This method is called clock position. Like the chopsticks are at the 6 o'clock position. Okay, you are done with nursing care at meal time in the category of skills for lifestyle support. Congratulations, you can get one step closer to be a good caregiver. See you next lesson.